Retirement in America. Were we better off 50 years ago? Yes, we were, Josh, because everyone had a pension. You know, there's, we'd have to rely on the scam that's called a 401k. It's, it's so, so let's go to this Morning Star article. Um, this is uh, examining nostalgia for the golden age of retirement. It's, uh, it's so, this article is not so dumb. The idea that uh, somehow the older times, they were better off. The boomers, man, they, I guess the boomers weren't retired 50 years ago. This animosity towards the boomers cracks me up. It's like the boomers just woke up and had everything handed to them. Um, no, no, no. Now, have the boomers lived through the, uh, the golden age of wealth accumulation? Yes. Probably never to be seen again like what the boomers went through. <laughs> but the idea that boomers just, I'm just a boomer. Give me money. I, dude, these... I, <laughs> the boomers had to work. I mean, the, the problem with the boomers, they worked too hard. That's where we had latchkey kids like me and like you and stuff. And, you know, the boomers, you know, did a lot of divorces and stuff. Look, the boomers weren't perfect, but I mean, my goodness, let's, can we stop with the animosity towards the boomers? That's just, as crazy. Oh, they have it so easy. Okay, boomer. I'm like, yeah. And what are you doing there? I don't have any money. You got sleeve tattoos. You got the newest thing in cell phones. You're eating Starbucks. You got freaking nose rings through your nose. All this crap. You know what I'm saying? You're freaking uh, took on all the student loan debt. You didn't have to go to college there, guy, to get a freaking degree in, you know, DEI studies, you freaking fool. I mean, you didn't have to do that. No one forced you to. No boomer put a gun to your head. But you're stupid because you got suckered in, unfortunately, by the school propaganda. And you didn't take a, a two seconds to think. And sadly, your parents didn't give you guidance either. That's the drawback, as a lot of boomers say. College made me wealthy, so college will make you wealthy. Uh, but if I hear another guy, I got no money. It's sleeve tattoos, the newest phones, freaking, I, I don't want to hear it, dude. I, I'm so sick of that crap. All right, so let's go on this. My man, John Reckenthaler, and I've read him before. My man, John, look at him. John's crushing. I bet he went to the West. He looked, doesn't he look like a West Point guy? He does to me. All right, over the years, I've encountered many articles wondering whether the prospects of retirees have improved. But never one that directly compared the income received by retirees who lived in the past with the income received today. Oh, so my man John has obviously never read his old buddy Josh's book, Relax and Retire, because we do just that. Now, we don't compare from 30, 50 years ago. We compare from the 30s until today. From the 30s until today. Because you think the... Do you think the boomers had it good? Wait till you run today's numbers and look at what they had in the 1930s. And that's not because of the Great Depression. We also compare the 1910s, the 1920s, the 1970s a little bit, the 1950s a little bit. Yeah. Anyways, keep going. Specifically, I calculate the median income for uh, 1973. That's 50 years ago. 1973's private sector retirees and 2021's private sector retirees, evaluating the change in circumstances between the two endpoints. All right, I like it. All right, uh, and then uh, most retirement debates invoke the fate of the typical Americans. The median income is a logical choice. Median means 50% have more, 50% have less, 100%. I'm not using public sector employees because their situation, uh, while warrants a discussion, is different than the private sector. All right, so let's go into this. In 1973, the median Social Security check, retirement check, was the princely sum of $166 a month, or in today's 2021 numbers, $1,004 a month. In 2021, imagine your Social Security was $1,004 a month. Well, that was the median Social Security check in 1973. Mm. Those retirees, of course, held no money in defined contribution plans as the 401k system had not been invented yet. A few profit sharing plans existed and some investors did own taxable accounts, but those assets were beyond the means of the median income employees and can be safely ignored. But they all had pensions. Oh, did they? Ordinary Americans might have been served by a pension on average. Uh, we don't have access to the median, but on average, and again, averages are always skewed to the higher, all right, the higher. So I have a dollar. Bill Gates has $500 billion million because of his you know, snake oil salesman. You know, our, our average, I'm a multi, multi, multi-billionaire. 
All right, the median is a buck. I think it's a buck. Is that what it is? is I think it's buck, buck. Because 50% have more, 50% have less. Yes, I guess the median would be a buck or maybe a buck or one, whatever it is. So remember, the average is always skewed towards the higher, the outliers. All right, and with the average pension was $177 a month, which is almost the exact same as the Social Security. So basically a little bit more than a thousand bucks a month for the pension. Hmm. So between your pension and Social Security, you're getting all two thousand a month. You didn't have any other money whatsoever. Yeah, but some people did. The vast majority didn't. Oh, but wait a second. Unfortunately, the pension system was not comprehensive. Most small and many mid-sized companies did not offer pension plans. What? Also, they were primarily primarily designed for long-term employees. Workers who often changed jobs, as his dad did, rarely qualified. In 1973, 44% of private sector service, private service, private sector retirees received pension income. 44%, meaning that 56, i.e. the majority did not. Hmm. So 44% of people had a pension of a thousand bucks a month and we'll just assume a, a social security of 2000, of another thousand a month. So they got 2000 a month, 44% had 2000 a month. 56% had all of 1,000 a month for Social Security. And no 401k plans either. Calculating expected income by the median income retiree there. Uh, calculating expected income for the median income retiree, ooh, that's hard to say, therefore requires multiplying that $177 check by 0.44, the exact how much the main people had a pension. So basically, what he's saying, he's saying basically the average would be $471 a month. So on average, a person uh, who retired in 1973 had a pension of $471 a month and a Social Security check of $1,000 a month. A month. That's it. But I wouldn't even do it like that. I'd say 56% of the population, the, the majority, only had a Social Security check of $1,000 a month. Hmm. So here we go. Right here, hold on a second. This is what they made in 1973 numbers. This is what they made in 2021 numbers, 1475. Hmm. Now let's take a look at 2021. Social Security benefits have increased over the past half century. Wonder why? Because the average wage index. Wages aren't keeping up with inflation, Josh. It's just not true. Well, my wages aren't. Well, your wages aren't. I get you. They're always going to be people that don't. That's a fact. But the average wage index has gone up more than inflation. That's not debatable. It's just, I, I don't, yes, your wages, your specific career choice, unfortunately, might not have worked that way. That sucks, dude. I don't know. I, I, I feel bad. For, I literally do. I feel bad for you. That's not the case for the median wage, though. It's just not. And the median means 50% of people have well more than the increase inflation. Well more. That's just a fact. The median monthly Social Security payment in 2021 was $1,600. $1,658. That's the median monthly payment which is 65% more than what we had in 1973 after adjusting for inflation. Through that boost alone, retirees are currently, our current retirees are wealthier than their predecessors, just as well because the pension income has withered. As is well known, most private pensions have vanished. Huh, I wonder why. Why did they vanish? Well, that's because in 1974, the year after we're looking at to compare 50 years ago, we had this thing called ERISA. Why did we have ERISA, Employee Retirement Income Securities Act? Because private sector pensions were co collapsing in front of us. You thought the, uh, the yellow freight or whatever was losing their pension. That was happening all across the board back then, man. That's why they had ERISA. So yes, you might've got a pension. It might've not been there later on because the private companies were, were saying, ah, they, didn't, they, they weren't maintaining their, their pensions very frugally, let's put it that way. Uh, at, uh, let's see here. By 2021, the average pension has struck to $884 and, and 2021 dollars, which is about 20, yeah, about 20% lower than what it was the average pension in 2021. At 20, in 1973. So 1973 and 2021 dollars, the average pension was $1,071. In 2021, the average pension was $884. Again, only 11% of people actually had a pension in 2021 anyway, of course, of private sector employees. With pension all but disappearing, defined contributions have attempted to fill that gap. At the at the task, they have not at that task, they have not fully succeeded. Hmm. Although I was unable to attain the industry median 401k balance for retirees, I did find the Vanguard's 80, we talked about this 87,000 at Vanguard is clearly insufficient. 
Um, but even because <laughs> we I've, I've done that a million times a Sunday, how silly that is. But let's just use it. Let's, that's literally the worst case scenario. Vanguard's median 401k balance was $87,000, which assuming a 5% withdrawal rate is $366 a month. All right. So $366 plus, plus the average Social Security at $1658. That's $2,000 a month right there using this silly number for the Vanguard median uh, pension uh, 401k plan. And again, the Vanguard plans doesn't take into consideration what? Oh, your IRAs. Your brokerage accounts, it also doesn't take into consideration what? Oh, other 401k plans that you have inside of Vanguard. It does take into consideration, but for the median, it just says this is how many, this is the, the, the total 401k balances, how many participants, that's the median balance is this. If you got two or three plans, they're, they're not consolidated into one. And then what else does Vanguard not do? They don't use Fidelity numbers, Merrill Lynch numbers, you know, freaking TSP numbers. Uh, it's just uh, so freaking dumb. It does no good to protest that only half of 1973, and I, I just can't believe this. I, uh, come on, John. Not to make it, not to make note of that is. Uh, <laughs> I mean, just to use that from Vanguard, he's kind of saying, "Look, I don't have a number, but we're we'll using Vanguard's." And he said, "Clearly, this is insufficient, as if it's warranted, but not to recognize that Vanguard's." Uh, it does no good to protest that only half of 1973's retirees receive pension income because the same caveat applies to defined contribution plans. Currently, 69% of full-time uh, private sector employees have access to a defined contribution plan, and about three-fourths who do have joined that plan. The overall percentage rate participation rate is 52%. Oh, my goodness. But you know what else we have now? We have easy access to investment accounts and brokerage accounts, easy access to IRAs. You know what we did not have back then? All that. Oh, now we got 2021. The median income is again. I, I challenge these numbers in some regard, but we'll use them anyway. 1945 and 2021 for a 2021 worker versus adjusted for inflation, 1475 for a 1973 worker. If that makes sense. Um, give my family background. I've long distrusted nostalgia about the golden age of retirement when everyday workers could allegedly retire without financial workers. There's the worries. There's no such thing as that. Um, there was no such thing. Um, the drawback about the pension nostalgia, you literally had to stay at the company for 20 to 30 years, dude. You know, I stayed at USA for 10 years. That's a long time. You literally had to stay in one place, a lot of times at the factory, for 20 to 30 years to get that pension. Now, how many just, just how much guys, you know, mostly men who had great ideas, brilliant ideas, but they stayed because of the pension. They stayed, they could not become an entrepreneur because I got to stay for 20 years. I got to stay for 30 years. How many people just, they never moved. They never, I just, oh man, they never did. And look, it's okay. But now with the 401k, it's your freaking money. It's your money. Obviously, if you leave the first two years, it might not be, but if you leave after six years, it's your flipping money to do it as, as you see fit. It gives you that more freedom than your stupid pension did. How many ladies were harassed by some clown? And she goes, I got to stay here. I got to stay here. I got to stay here for the I just, It's just this idea that the old days were better. It's just so stupid. Um, while today's meanest private sector retirees are undeniably better off than the Ford, and it's even more than undeniable because, again, he's using a stupid thing from Vanguard. And that's not, I just, uh, Finally, if there remains any doubt that today's median income retirees have the advantage of 1970s, consider this. Few of those pension plan checks can contain full cost of uh, living increases, and many had none at all. And indeed, concluded a government study from 1973 through 1979, the average pension benefit grew 40% as quickly as inflation. That is, while uh, prices were up 63%, pension payments only gained 25%. That's if your pension even stayed in full. Um, for defined contribution plans, let's see, this is stupid too. I'm not saying this guy's stupid. I just hate this argument. For defined contribution plans to improve upon what the pension system must provide, two things must occur. They must become universal. Uh, they are universal. There's called a uh, IRA, an IRA plan, an IRA plan. You can start your own IRA. What are you going to make? You're going to mandate, John, that employers contribute to their employees? You know, you're going to do that. You're going to say, you know, we got a small business. You have to contribute to a 401k or a 403b. You're going to mandate that, that they have to. You know what that does to wages there, John? No. 
Instead, let's say this is what we should have done to begin. We're going to give you a voucher for your health care. We're not going to do anything through work. Here's a $10,000 a year voucher. Go buy your own. That's what they should have done with health care. They should do the same doggone thing when it comes to retirement plans. We're going to give you a voucher. No tax deferrals. Here's a voucher. Do it as you see fit. They'll never do that, but that's what they should do. So what do you say? They must become universal. Every company must offer a plan. Huh. Every company. What, by, by IRS dictates? And if you don't, you can't be a company? Forced compliance would be a step too far. Oh, okay. Every company must offer a plan, but he throws a, a side note. Forced compliance would be a step too far. Well, how are you going to do it? Then? Second, contribution rates need to improve. Uh, this need, okay, whatever. I just, that's so silly. What was, by the way, I don't have my book here. What was the taxes on, uh, on Social Security back then too, by the way? Anyone want to take a guess? What were the taxes? And I don't, off the top of my head, I don't know. Read my book. He'll tell you. I just don't have my book down here. You can retire on Social Security. All right, they're lower than they are now too. So why is the contribution rates low? Well, because we're paying more and more social security taxes. Anyway, we're well better off financially than we were back then. It's just a fact for retirees. It's not even debatable. It's not even debatable. And I'd love to hear you try. By all means, put in the comments why you think we're worse off now than we used to be. Love to hear it. Right. Love your thoughts. We'll see you.